Welcome. This video will give you an overview of the cool features of the JKI State Machine. After you've installed the JKI State Machine, you can start using it first by opening a blank VI and then navigating to your functions palette. Once there, go to JKI Toolkits, JKI State Machine. Just click on the State Machine structure icon and drop it on the block diagram. It's that easy. The JKI State Machine includes a single OK button as a kickoff point for your user interface. This is automatically placed on the front panel when you drop the State Machine. The JKI State Machine starts off with a while loop that contains a case structure. At the core of the JKI State Machine is an event handler that's located in the idle frame of the case structure. The event handler has a timeout frame, which we've set to minus one. This means that the timeout frame will never execute. If you need to execute the timeout frame in uh, your program, then you need to set a value here of zero or greater, like 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds. States are executed by wiring in a multi-line string of states that will execute. Each line in the string represents a single state. For example, in the macro initialize state, we have four states that are executed. There's the data initialize, initialize data core, UI initialize, and UI front panel state open. The states go through the shift register and get parsed by the parse state QVI visible on the left. It reads the state Q string and extracts the current state the remaining states, and any available arguments. Let's add a button on the front panel to see how this actually works. The easiest way to add another button is to duplicate the entire event frame of the existing OK button. All we need to do is right click and say duplicate event case. What we'll have is the OK button duplicated and Lavi will create an OK2 button. We select it and select value change. And we also rename it and call it my work. This will allow us to find it a lot easier. Now we want, based on this button press, to execute two states of the JKI state machine. To do that, we edit the existing constant. We replace macro exit with tutorial one and tutorial three. So now when the my work button is pressed, it'll actually execute those two states in sequence. Those two states already exist. I've created them earlier. As you can see, if I click on the label, If you need to pass variables between states, you can define them in the data cluster shift register located here. Data can be defined and initialized in the state called data initialize of the state machine. The data names of the variable constants are used. We can see that when if we probe the cluster wire, we can see the name of the constants show up in the probe. Sometimes it's not convenient to use a constant with a label and uh, sometimes variables are dynamically initialized. In that case, you can use a bundle by name in a type def cluster where you can actually explicitly define the names of the data types. This is a personal enhancement and can be added to the state machine. Here's an example of how we can use the variables we just created. If we go back to the my work event frame, we can actually do a bundle by name And we can select the variable that was initialized in the data initialized. For example, we can use your string data. Feed it with a string parameter. And then if we go to the tutorial frame, we can do an unbundle by name. 
and the string parameter that we passed in in the event frame is available here. Another way to pass variables between states is using the argument concept. As you can see here, as an example, in the UI front panel state, open is the argument. The text open is actually not included in the state name, as you can see here. It's actually pulled out of the parse state QVI as an argument. And that argument can be used, for example, as in this case, to define certain work behavior. There's an open and a close that we've defined in the UI from panel state. In the macro exit, we have the same thing. UI from panel state close, and close is the argument that we pass. This allows you to pass transient variables between states, variables that only exist for a short period of time. Now, your design decision as to whether to use arguments or not is up to you. Instead of using arguments, in this case, we could have just created two separate states, UI from panel state open and UI from panel state closed. The JKI state machine has built-in error handling, which is provided via shift register and an error cluster. This error cluster can be populated with an error message from within any state. Upon the next iteration of the state machine, the error message is passed to the parse state QVI, which outputs a specific state called error handler. Once in the error handler frame, you can perform any specific error handling that you need. Currently, the JKI state machine provides basic error handling using the built-in uh, LabVIEW error handling VI. However, this can be replaced with your own, for example, if you need to log the error to a file or to pop up a custom dialog. This can easily be changed here. There are several support VIs included with the JKI state machine. One of them shown here is the add states to queue. This allows you to dynamically generate a sequence of states by feeding three separate inputs. The outputs maintain the multi-line nature of the string by concatenating all three inputs with line feeds. It's recommended to use this support VI when dynamically constructing a sequence of states. And this concludes our tutorial on the JKI state machine. Thank you for watching. For more information and additional tutorials and examples, visit jkisoft.com slash state machine.